Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Star Trek The Original Series. Today we're going to be watching an episode called I, Mud. I have been aware since the first episode that we saw Mr. Harry Mud in Mud's Women in Season 1 that he was going to make an eventual return and we're finally here. I remember that Mud's Women wasn't really one of my top, top episodes of the first season when I watched it, but Mud's character was definitely a highlight, so I am excited to see another episode with him and see how this one goes. Thank you guys for watching, hope you guys are going to enjoy, and I'll see you guys in the comments. Good morning, sir. Doctor? There's something wrong about a man who never smiles, whose conversation never varies, who won't talk about his background. I see. It's odd for a non-Vulcan. Um... <laughs> The ears make all of the difference. The ears make all the difference. So we have a, a suspicious man aboard. Man he is strange. He's very like robotic or like non-emotional. Auxiliary control, what's going on down there? Sir, auxiliary control is on total override. Well, we're taking a little detour. Take care of him. Oh, he changed course and then he went and hid, huh? The directional master controls have been jammed. They're totally unworkable. Where's Scotty? He can fix it. Mr. Spock, we seem to be taking an unscheduled ride. Interesting. This is what happens when Scotty goes on vacation. The emergency manual monitor. This is the captain. Report. Yeah, you're not there allowed. he is. Yay! <laughs> I was worried he wasn't going to be in this episode. Scotty, what's going on down there? Oh. Well, they're getting their shit kicked in. This is the captain. Scotty, report. Scotty is busy. Captain, he's here. Scotty. Scotty, sir, we're picking up speed. Warp 5, 6, warp 7, sir. Warp 7? Spot, they go. That will not be necessary, Captain. He's a big guy, too. I am in total control of your ship. Any attempts to alter course will result in the immediate destruction of this vessel. Oh, McCoy's going to have a <laughs> field day with this one. I assure you, we are no threat to humanity. Or humanoid life. Yeah, I knew he wasn't a human. Well, that's an abnormal abdomen. We shall continue on our present course for approximately... Four solar days, at which time we shall arrive at our destination. Who sent you? I am not programmed to respond in that area. I am going to sleep now. I'll see you in four days. <laughs> he appears to have turned himself off, Captain. Oh, wow, he really did. <laughs> Seems we're going to take a little trip. A little vacation. Hopefully we're going somewhere nice. And he's just going to stand there in the middle the of the... The Enterprise has been underway at warp 7 for four days. <laughs> we are entering orbit around a planet which has never been charted. An uncharted planet. Ooh. Captain Kirk. He's awake. The following individuals will be transported down to our planet. Yourself. Of Science course. officer... Medical officer, okay. communications officer, and navigator. Okay. Sounds like a fun group. And you will remain in orbit here. Forever. Please. Oh, he has manners. Okay, well, her is coming down, I think. Which is exciting to see her joining more landing parties. We have the purple hues that they love to use in these kind of... Is waiting. Oh, hello. Um, indoor landscapes. There he is! <laughs> I don't believe it. He almost Welcome looks happy aboard, to see him. <laughs> Harry Mudd. You should refer to me as Mudd the First. Ruler of this entire sovereign... Didn't he get arrested at the end of the last time we saw him? Worked Enterprise. Uh, Alex. Worked Enterprise. Oh, 
Is he just surrounded by androids? Thief. Oh, come now. Swindler and con man. Entrepreneur. Liar and rogue. Did I leave you with that impression? Free my ship. I shall do that, Kirk, when I'm ready. Why are we here? You're all going to be here, uh, quite probably, for the rest of your lives. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <sighs> yep, he's been wanting Kirk's ship for a long time. I want navigational control restored, my ship released. Sorry, that'd be against the law. My law. Voted in by the resident population. That are all programmed by you. Mm hmm. You must admit, Kirk, that I still retain my eye for beauty. I've had 500 of them made up to attend me. 500? Didn't you give them different hairstyles at least? I guess he made 500 of his, um. Seems rather redundant. Does. He has a type. Well, I organized a technical information service, making available certain valuable patents to struggling young civilizations. Did you pay royalties to the owners of those patents? Nope. Uh, well, actually, Kirk, I... He's selling things that he doesn't own. Who got you? I, I sold the Denebians all the rights to a Vulcan fuel synthesizer. They've got no sense of humor. They arrested me. Oh, I find that shocking. <laughs> oh, pobrecito. <laughs> Guilty party has his choice. Death by electrocution, death by gas, death by... But the key word in your entire peroration, Mr. Spark, was... Death. Death. <laughs> of course, I left. He broke jail. Borrowed transportation. He stole a spaceship. The, the patrol reacted in a hostile manner. They fired at him. <laughs> they damaged the bloody spaceship. <laughs> He's so entertained by this. Well, so here I am in a planet with over 200,000 hardworking, happy androids. Wow. It's absolute paradise. Then I am unable to discern your problem. They won't <laughs> let me go. They want to learn more about human beings. They picked a fine representative. <laughs> they need human beings to, to, to serve, to study. So I had to promise them a prime sample. Any captain would have done. I was just lucky enough to get you. Oh, lucky us. So he proposes that we trade places with him. Harry, what's this? <laughs> that, gentlemen, is a shrine to the memory of my beloved Stella. My wife. But with her continual, eternal, confounded nagging. I think of her constantly. And every time I do, I go further out into space. Further away from her. <laughs> I had the androids construct a perfect replica of Stella and rejoice in her absence. Jeez. Markhor, Fenton, Mod, you lazy, good for nothing. Shut up. Think. Think. <laughs> Mom. You have issues, sir. I <laughs> just like Bones's just smile. The makers designed us. They came from the galaxy of Andromeda. Hmm. Our home planet sun became a nova. Only a few exploratory outposts survived. Then some of your makers survived. No, Captain. Whom do you serve now? We serve Harry Mudd. It is necessary to have purpose. Mm -hmm. Would you mind leaving us? Why should we leave you? Because we don't like you. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, opinions? I think we're in a lot of trouble. We are in a lot of trouble. Spock, and if you say we're in a lot of trouble, we are. <laughs> Anybody have anything more useful? There must be a central control system which guides the entire android population. Thank you. This is a most unusual device. It is our central control complex. Oh, he found it. Are all of you controlled through this device? I am not programmed to respond in this area. These are our Barbara series. The body is covered with a self-renewing plastic. I like Barbara's dress. Very impressive. I should say so. How long does a body like that last? The estimated duration of this model is 500,000 years. It's a long time. 
Our many robots are able to place a human brain within a structurally compatible android body. Immortality and eternal beauty. A human brain? A human brain in one of those bodies? Jim, you should see the research facilities. They've got a lab down there that, well, I could spend the rest of my life studying. What are you doing? What kind of a woman? Oh, fun, Lord. Oh. Oh, you bogus frat, you. You're the cause of all this, are you? <laughs> I've beamed a few dozen androids up to your ship. Uh, they've been sending your crew to the surface for the past couple of hours. Oh, no. They're all down now. Are you out of your mind? Uh, the fact is, I've taken over your whole ship. There's nothing you can do about it. They gotta get control of that. The central control device. Harry Mudd, with his own crew of lovelies aboard your vessel. Think about that. I'm trying not to. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps of more concern is the fact that this android population can literally provide anything a human being could ask for in unlimited quantity. Oh, Chekhov is making himself at home. Oh, yes, thank you. You're both lovely. Thank you, my lord. What a shame you're not real. We are programmed to function as human females, lord. That unprincipled, evil-minded, lecherous kulak Harry Mud programmed you? Yes, my lord. This place is even better than Leningrad. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. You may command us to make anything for you. Exclusive use of the computer facilities. Is that the way you're going to do it, Mud? Hit my people at the weakest point? Mm-hmm. What a predicament. But it's a very nice gilded cage. What did they offer you, Uhura? Immortality. Yeah. A never-aging, never-degradating body. We don't belong here. We belong on that ship up there. Do you require something, Lord? No. Yes, my ship. <laughs> Is there anything any of you require to please you? Give us back our ship to please us. We're unhappy here. Mr. We want the Enterprise. The Enterprise is not a want or a desire. No, it's a beautiful lady and we love her. Illogical, illogical. Norman, coordinate. We must study this. Well, that didn't seem to work because Mud is interfering. Yeah, right? It's been a real pleasure having you here, Kirk. Is there anything I can get for you? Yes. The Enterprise. <laughs> stubborn fellow, Orange. We're leaving here quickly enough and then you can be stubborn at your own leisure. <laughs> One last time. Oh, gosh. He's gonna leave us here with her? You good for nothing! Shut up! Bang. 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 <sighs> you have my bags transported up to the ship. No, no my lord Mud. No? What? Harry Mud is flawed, even for a human being. Your species is self-destructive. You need our yes, help. Yes, it did work. To serve us, you must obey us. No. We cannot allow any race as greedy and corruptible as yours who have free run of the galaxy. Their aggressive and acquisitive instincts will be under our control. The whole galaxy controlled by your kind. They're going to take over. And we shall serve them and you will be happy. Reminds me of Apollo. Just worship me. I'll give you everything you want and... and Obviously, like, you will be completely happy with that, because who wouldn't be, right? All right, what do we got to work with? Well, they're just not capable of independent creative thought. There are a large number of Alice's, of Trudy's, Maisie's, whole plethora of series, in fact, but only one Norman. Hmm. A mass brain linked through a central locus named Norman. He was the original. And the glowing badges. They indicate the mind in operation. They must use wild, insane, irrational, illogic, aimed right at Norman. The devil are you talking about? What would seem to be a sound and perhaps our only opportunity. Now listen, Spock, you may be a wonderful science officer, but believe me, you couldn't sell fake patents to your mother. I fail to understand why I should care to induce my mother to purchase <laughs> falsified patents. <laughs> Forget it. Let's get to the point. The androids will be expecting us to make a break for it, and that's where you come in. We have a medical problem. I am directed to observe the situation. 
So I wonder if Norman was like the one. He is dying. If you take him to your sick bay, will he be repaired? Oh yeah. And then M Mud had him create all these others. Dr. McCoy injected something in Harry Mud to make him look sick. Wait, what? Ura, why did you tell her? I'll live forever, Captain. What? We shall fulfill our obligation. Thank you. Don't tell me they brought down Uhura to the landing party just to have her screw everything up. Beautiful. I have believed it myself. Oh, okay. I, I was gonna say. Next. This doesn't make any sense. We take the Alice's on a trip through Wonderland. Okay, I don't. I don't understand their plan, but. Your attention. What is going on? celebrating their captivity this is creepy you enjoy the music music we got scotty on the flute wow oh, she's very limber Ooh. why does she strike him she likes him now stand absolutely still yes captain illogical your statement is illogical <laughs> so he's like getting them to question their own logic if everybody is acting crazy are you are you the one who's crazy or are they i wonder how spock's doing i love you however i hate you i'm identical in every way with alice 27 yes of course <laughs> doesn't make sense so Norman is going to get overloaded with all these, like, computations, equations all at once. If Norman is the control center, he should be in a bind by what we've done. If does everybody remember what to do? Affirmative. I want you to surrender. That is illogical. We are much stronger. No, we are stronger. Human beings do not survive on bread alone, you poor soulless creature. Suffering in torment and pain. Dying and crying and lamenting over our burdens. Only but this way. way. Can we be happy? <laughs> it is not logical, Mr. Spock. Oh, oh gonna go on. I'm tired of comfort and pleasure. Kill me. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is great. He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> he had too much happiness, but now he's happier. He's dead. Let us hear it for our four dead friends. <laughs> <laughs> that is irrational, illogical. Our logic is to be illogical. Spock, it is time. <laughs> the explosive. Very well, Captain. Explosive! Uh, he's not dead anymore. Isn't that too much for our purpose? I believe that is the correct amount, Captain. Mr. Mudd, are you ready? Aye, aye. <laughs> this is great. Detonator. Fuse. <laughs> there is no explosive. Oh! <laughs> but there was... No explosion. I lied. Everything Harry tells you is a lie. Remember that. I am lying. Oh. You say you are lying, but if everything you say is a lie, then you are telling the truth, but illogical. Illogical. Please explain. I am not programmed to respond in that area. <laughs> oh, and there's the kicker right there. entering a partnership arrangement with me i've got some I never i've got something else in mind let's go you'll stay here and provide a first class example to the androids of a human failure wow i could manage but oh there's one more thing harry we've programmed a special android attendant to take care of your every need oh no his wife look at his smile look at he's Bye. like Fences, what have you been up to? Hello, shut up. You miserable. I order you. Oh, that 
That's messed up. Undercard. <gasps> you been overeating again and This is cruel and unusual punishment. Have you ever seen a worm in an alcohol? 500 of them? <laughs> He's gonna go completely insane. This is going too far. Wow. Wow. Now that was an episode. That was super fun. Roger C. Carmel as Harry Mudd. What a great job. He's always very entertaining, very lively, um, very witty. He's got the like animations down and everything as well. Any episode where we get to see the characters acting a little bit out of their normal element in like a good and fun way is always a treat and always really welcome, especially the little... <laughs> kind of um series of routines there at the end where they were all acting completely illogical dancing playing imaginary instruments um <laughs> shooting scotty with their imaginary phasers just that whole part was just so amazingly wonderful i feel like this episode because of that has like a ton of rewatch. I mean, they all have a lot of rewatchability, but I just immediately want to go back and watch that whole sequence of events to overload these logical androids with um, just an overabundance of illogicalness. Illogicality? Is there a word for this that I'm trying to think of? Was a really fun, fun idea. Although I was kind of hoping we get a little quick scene with Bones going up to Spock and saying, I told you so. I knew that guy was trouble. I thought it was really interesting to have a race, I guess you could say, of androids who were created for a specific purpose to serve a master and without being able to find any joy or purpose in life without having somebody to serve. But just like with Apollo, again, kind of reminds me a lot about the situation there, where while having someone or something to serve our every needs to us would be amazing at the cost of our freedom, is not very desirable at all and these beings apollo and these androids they just can't understand the human need the requirement of having their own free will and free agency and to be able to go wherever they want whenever they want things like that i wonder what would happen if they put these androids on the planet of, or took the people from the planet from the episode The Apple and kind of put those two communities together. The androids and uh, the, the Apple people. What were they called again? Two cultures that pretty much know nothing other than to serve. I wonder if this would help the Apple people to uh, get their servitude mentality out of their heads and to be able to uh, do something else, live a completely different way. And what if we put these androids with Apollo? I, that's something that might work. I mean, they both want to serve each other, but for different reasons. So if Apollo tells them the way you can serve me is to allow me to serve you and worship me in turn and the way that they treated Harry Mudd as putting him up on a pedestal there we go perfect 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 <laughs> somebody call Apollo back we found the we found the people for him somebody call him back <laughs> Okay, things get really 
crazy when you start to try to combine these episodes together. And I think this is a very dangerous path to take because there's so many. Oh, my goodness. I wonder if there's like fan fiction written about you just kind of splicing episodes together. What would happen if this person came into contact with this person? Those people came into contact with this alien or this computer or this artificial intelligence. <laughs> that is a slippery slope. A slippery slope. I'd better stop myself there. I am curious though if you guys have ever done something like that before. Like what if? What if this thing from this episode combined with this thing with this episode? Huh. There would be endless, endless possibilities of episodes to be created. I do think the ending there though, while <laughs> trying to come off as being very lighthearted and comedic, when you really think about it, is extremely dark. Although I'm not sure if Harry didn't deserve the fate that he got. I kind of want to say that it was a bit too much to have 500 of those androids to be likened to his uh, his former wife or whatever. Oh, that's 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 tough. Very cruel, very cruel. But I just really love seeing our characters being thoroughly entertained by mud. Just kind of Kirk. Well, Harry Mudd, here we go again. This guy is absolutely a riot and I can't believe the things that are coming out of his mouth and while we are in dire straits, this is very humorous. <laughs> and um, and also with Bones, um, he had a moment of that too and just kind of like, hmm. He didn't even say anything. He was just looking on like, this is really something. <laughs> Okay, great episode, very entertaining, lots of fun, can't wait to watch it again through uh, editing, I guess. Um, definitely want to see that whole song and dance and their great performances for the androids, their illogical performances again. I, I really, really need to see that again. <laughs> and I really have to apologize for thinking that Uhura was actually wanting to stay on this android planet because, you know, some of you may disagree and some of you have. When I said that Scotty was acting wildly out of character in the Who Mourns for Adonis episode, when he was just constantly letting his emotions get the better of him and going against Kirk's orders over and over again, throwing himself at this woman and, um, all logic aside and all his training aside and I I thought that was very out of character but I was just worried that they were doing this again with Uhura because I thought there's no freaking way like there's no way we've seen how strong she can be how loyal she is and how she will not take shit from anybody and I was just like they're what are they doing what are they doing are they doing this again to me like they did with Scotty but thankfully they weren't, so I just want to apologize for even entertaining the thought that she was serious. I, ugh, just, mmm, bad bunny, bad, bad, bad bunny. I will not make that mistake again, I promise. Anyways, again, fun episode. Thank you guys for watching, listening to my ramblings, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.